Thank you so much for joining At Risk 2021, the virtual conference hosted by Housing for the Aged Action Group and the University of Melbourne. We're discussing solutions and action to address the crisis in older women's housing. We must keep a laser focus on the challenges that lie ahead and ensure that the policy settings are right to support older women of today and tomorrow. The government is providing Australian women with opportunities to retrain and learn new skills to participate more fully in the workforce in high demand sectors of the economy. I've come to realise that my experience is not my fault, nor due to poor choices, but rather the inevitable result of systemic, economic and societal factors which increase women's vulnerability to homelessness. Older women are generally the invisible homeless. Federal governments can and should be building public housing. Homelessness and poverty for that matter is a choice that governments make with the policies and the budget decisions that they take every year. Um, and I want to just flag that I know it's even harder for First Nations women, for women with a disability or for women who are coming from um, cold backgrounds. Housing shouldn't be a commodity. Housing is a human right and everybody deserves a home. But the problem was that those um, initiatives, as great as they are, are temporary and they rely on sporadic funding and they need to be made permanent. The one key thing at the moment would be social housing and public housing. Homelessness is a choice by our government and it's one that no government should be making. But I think if any government listened to what the experts and the service providers are saying, uh, change those policy settings, we could actually fix this problem. These problems are not intractable. They are choices being made by government. The background material has a quote from the Department of Social Security, the federal government, saying that housing is predominantly a state and territory responsibility. It's just not true. Housing is the responsibility of every level of government. Well, we need to start having a few less old white guys running the show in Parliament <laughs> and having a lot more women in Parliament, a lot more people um, that genuinely represent our community. So diversity across all of the different measures. Australia is no longer uh, a country that does proper gender analysis in its budget papers. With, with every decision that goes to the Cabinet, the question is asked, what is the gender impact of this decision? How does it affect men and women differently? And, and then you ask yourself, OK, if there is a differential impact, are we still going to do it this way? We need more women in Parliament because I think uh, if you're not at the table, you're not going to be discussing it. You do have to vote women into Parliament. OK, so I put out the plea and it wasn't an ask, it's a demand. Work together. I know there'll be intricacies. I know, and I think we need to address some of the issues around stigmatisation, stereotyping. Really, it's not that hard. I think all those points that have been made about women need to be more in politics, yes, I do. Well, if they're not actually there, invite us to the table. There's lots of advocates out there. We do need the lift experience. We need the feedback to know, you know, how to advocate. Tell them that you will change your vote if they don't change their policy to address the issue that you're facing and share your story. Email, write, phone, visit, go to street stalls, come to the events, tell your story, talk, talk to members of parliament and, um, and, and actually be prepared to vote on it. I think this is one of the most critical issues facing Australia today. For older homeless women we're talking about today, the next generation of young Australians, God knows whether any of them will ever be able to afford a home of their own unless we get this right. But they've got to, there are ways that we can address the problem.